Welcome back. So in my opinion, Flatpak has kind of won the universal package race. I say that as a desktop user, not as somebody who is deeply involved in the Linux server space, because I understand that snap packages have their advantages on Linux servers. Uh, however, the focus of today's video is looking at the comparison of these universal packages, uh, these formats that allow software developers to create one package that will run on a myriad of Linux distributions. Uh, so what I want to do is first of all, talk about the big three, which are Flatpak, Snap and App Images. And then I want to talk about how the adoption of these various package formats are going across some of the most popular Linux projects. So I've already kind of played my hand here right at the top of the video that in my opinion, from where I'm standing as a desktop Linux user, Flatpak seem to have become the most widely adopted and most used standard. Uh, however, there might be some more to it than that. So let's jump in. Before we get started, quick history lesson of uh, for some of you who might not have been subscribed to the channel for all that long. Uh, I've been making videos on this channel for a very long time, but I've taken some significant hiatuses along the way. The reason being was that back in 2015, I took a fairly significant hiatus from YouTube uh, in order to focus on my university study at the time. And uh, the biggest thing that I noticed when I came back to making YouTube videos in 2018 was how the space had developed around universal packaging. Around seven years ago, so 2015 or so, uh, I was leaving or the start of 2016 and then I noodled around with a few more generic videos and then started coming back into the scene. Um, but the interesting thing for me was the emergence of these universal packaging formats because one of the banes of Linux, long time Linux users, will know that uh, packaging formats like DEBs and RPMs that were natively installed on your operating system were problematic at best. And developing software that would work across multiple distributions was a real issue. Uh, so universal packaging allowed people to create one package and offer it to as many different Linux users as possible. And I would say this development alone has led to an, a significant uptake in both app development on Linux, both from proprietary software makers and from open source ones, but also it's led to more users actually using Linux on the daily because of the availability of apps. So it's one of those things that I think has, it's probably one of the single greatest developments that has helped close the app gap that uh, Linux users often feel between Mac OS, Windows and Linux. So when we looked at it, we had Flatpak, uh, which has, in my opinion, now become kind of the go-to standard on the desktop. We also have uh, the Snap packages, uh, championed by Canonical, and then we have App Images. So first impressions for me and where these have developed. So App Images for me actually felt a lot like .dmgs or the .apps on macOS in that you could just double click them and they would run, or you could double click them and integrate them into your system just by copy and pasting the bundle uh, that would then run natively sandboxed in an environment on your operating system. Uh, with the help of things like uh, App Image Launcher, you could create menu icons uh, that would help populate the menus and help them feel more native. Um, but things like uh, being able to update the application, uh, being able to use a specific set of dependencies along with the app, uh, these were all advantages that some of these universal packaging formats held as everything is contained within that package. The downside is that the disk usage of these applications tend to balloon because of that. Uh, now, one quick example when it comes to app images that I still use is that I often will revert to using the Caden Live, uh, which is the video editor that I use. I'll often use the app image version of it because I find it tends to be just a bit more stable than the one that comes through Snap or through FlatHub. Now, recently, I'd say in the last kind of three to six months, the Flat pack version of Caden Live has been better. And so I've not been needing the app image as much, but I always fall back on the app image. And that seems to be what Caden Live recommend if you're having issues with stability. Uh, now, apart from that, do I use any other app images? Not really. Why? Well, because they're not really that well integrated into the systems that I use. Uh, with the exception of a little project called Nitrix, 
uh, or Nitrix. Uh, these guys really lean into the whole app images side of things. And uh, it's basically like a Debian core with plasma and app images. And uh, apart from just being a really funky project with a really cool sense of uh, design and all that kind of thing, um, that's to my knowledge, the only sort of desktop Linux system that uh, focuses and goes all in on the app image side of things. In my mind, they're a little decentralized and it's hard to get, apart from app image hub here, uh, it's hard to get a tool that keeps all of those up to date and running in the background, uh, like you do with Snap and Flatpak on their respective platforms. All right, so then let's talk about Snap uh, because Snaps seem to have quite a bit more controversy behind them. It's a little bit of a storm in a teacup, but I can understand where it comes from in that App Images and Flatpak are both open source standards with uh, everything about the entire process is the code is available and can be audited and is free as in freedom of speech kind of thing, as opposed to uh, free as in financially free. Uh, on the flip side, Canonical took a lot of the learnings that they had from the whole PPA situation uh, where they had uh, a significant amount of work would have needed to go into open source, the Launchpad platform that used to run custom repositories on Ubuntu before they started developing Snaps. And, uh, and what they found was that when they did open source a particular component of it, very little contribution was made towards it. Now it's a bit of a chicken or the egg excuse in my opinion. So the call was made that the Snap store would remain a centralized hub for all Snap packages. And while the packaging standard itself is open source, the server that collects all of these snaps and serves them up to the public uh, is a proprietary or a, or a less open source uh, standard. Now, having said that, Ubuntu is by far and away the champion of the Snap package standard. Now, my understanding is that Snaps were initially developed for the server because Ubuntu is gigantic in the server space and the advantages that come from the snap packaging format, uh, the way that they handle uh, sandboxing, Delta updates, the works, uh, is much more advantageous to the server space than it is to the desktop. Having said that, they reverse engineered a lot of the goodness that they could get from the snap package and the advantages it gave to the server so that they could kind of make it also work on the desktop. More as an afterthought, I think, than a purpose built from the ground up. This led to controversy around Snap packages performance, especially on first launch and different distributions started picking sides. So for example, the distribution that I'm running here, Linux Mint decided that they weren't going to support Snap packages, A, because of the open source issue, B, because of performance. Um, but it did cause issues when it came to packaging uh, popular applications like the web browser. So on Ubuntu, by default, you use a snap package version of Firefox uh, on the distribution. Now the justification for this is very simple. We want one package that we can update and publish security updates to and have it go out to every single Ubuntu release that we have, not relying on packaging multiple Debian packages for LTS releases, for interim releases, and for development releases. They just wanted to have one simple package management stream to manage all of that. And in that sense, it does work. But the amount of work that's had to go into the background and the amount of uh, goodwill that they've lost in the process, I think has kind of put a dampener on the momentum of the uh, Snap store and Snap packages as a whole. Now, again, this could be very much symptomatic of my own echo chamber in that I personally haven't used Snap packages in quite some time. And, uh, and maybe there are huge amounts of people using these, but also I do remember seeing at one point uh, statistics on how many people were using different Snap packages across various platforms. And while you can still see a graphical representation of that, they don't actually have any numbers attached to the user base anymore. I don't know if that is a thing that's changed. Could have sworn at one point I remember seeing numbers there. Uh, but either way, I feel like just by seeing the Snap Store, the state that it's in and the state that it has been, there's not been a whole lot of movement here uh, even though they have been able to pick up a few proprietary kind of flagship apps uh, from some proprietary developers uh, across, across the board. 
That leads us, of course, to Flatpak, where I believe Flatpak, when you look at the, the landscape of Linux distributions, Flatpak has been adopted by Linux Mint, it's been adopted by Fedora, it's been adopted by Elementary OS. Uh, Zorin manages to branch out across all of these and support all of them at once, which is kind of wild. Uh, but Flatpak seems to be the one that a lot of the open source Linux desktop community is coalescing around. Uh, and the advantages of Flatpak are pretty clear. Uh, you get a, uh, an easy to integrate platform into existing software managers and update managers. So whether you're on Linux Mint and you're dealing with Mint's excellent update manager, whether you're on uh, KDE and you're using KDE Discover, whether you're on Elementary and you're using their uh, App Center, uh, whether you're you, whatever app store you might be using to install your applications, Flatpak has managed to integrate very cleanly and very quickly into basically all of them. The reach that a, a more centralized app store like Flathub seems to have is, uh, is just growing by the day. The amount of apps that I see popping up in here and by extension popping up in the Linux Mint software store uh, is pretty incredible. Not to mention they uh, redid the front end of Flathub to kind of make it that little bit more polished and more accessible. Uh, a lot of the kinks in uh, donation links and also descriptions being synced across uh, from the web portal to the app stores that are on different distributions are all ticking ahead quite nicely. Uh, and so the adoption for Flatpak and Flathub as a, as, a, as a centralized kind of store for a lot of these things uh, is pretty incredible. And they're managing to do it all while still keeping and retaining that open source license that the community smiles upon. Nowadays, I would say that the vast majority of apps that I use are on uh, Flatpak through Flathub. Why? Well, it's pretty obvious. I get updates, consistent updates, both for security and features, built into the OS. So it honestly doesn't matter as a desktop user, how old your base system is provided that you can find the apps that you need that you rely on, on Flathub. Uh, the fact that Flathub also integrates directly in with the update manager now, so that when I get an update for a flat pack, it'll show up here along with all my other system updates is really nice. Uh, the Delta updates, meaning that I'm not downloading the entire thing every time there's an update is also really nice. The one criticism that I have about flat packs, uh, and they seem to fall prey to it more so than some of the other um, universal packaging standards is the amount of disk space these things use. So after the folder that has all my virtual machines in it, this is the folder that has the most in it. And you can see it's about 15 gigs worth of uh, flat packs that are installed there. And honestly, that's a fairly small amount. I know this, this amount has grown to like 25, 30 gigs on different systems that I've owned, which compared to native packages, that is significantly more. But it's just one of the drawbacks of using a universal packaging standard. Thankfully, disk space is fairly affordable these days. Well, let me know what you think. Has Flatpak won the universal desktop packaging format wars, if there ever was such a thing? Let me know in the comments below. See you in the next one.